When we get into the subject of canonicity, in other words, the early church figuring out what New Testament books belong in the New Testament canon and which ones don't, it's fair to say that some very early on objected to including the book of Revelation in the New Testament canon. Why did they do that? Because the style of writing is different, and so they don't think John the Apostle could have written this. Now, we've explained the differences of the style of writing. And it's important to understand that a lot of people early on in church history didn't believe that John's uh, revelation, the Apostle John's revelation coming from Jesus to the Apostle John, you know, better said, belongs in the New Testament canon because this book talks about an earthly kingdom. That shows up in Revelation 20, verses 1 through 10. In fact, in Revelation uh, chapter 5 and verse 10, it says, You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. And a lot of the early church fathers didn't believe in a future earthly kingdom. And so that becomes the reason why some uh, didn't believe this book was canonical. But that is insufficient grounds for disqualifying its canonicity because the earthly kingdom of Christ is a major teaching of the rest of Scripture. So, you know, simply saying the book is not canonical because the style of writing is different is an invalid argument, as we've tried to explain. Simply saying that this book should not be canonical because it mentions a future earthly kingdom, that's an invalid argument. And one of the reasons we think the book is canonical is because it harmonizes really well with prior revelation. And that's how the early church determined what was canonical and what was not. There was a test of apostolicity. Was it written by an apostle or someone who knew one of the apostles? There was a test of what's called Catholicity, which has nothing to do with the Catholic Church. It has to do with universality. That's what the word Catholic means. Was it embraced as a apostolic writing by all of the early churches? And then there was a test of orthodoxy. Did it, did it contradict prior revelation? In other words, did it contradict what God said elsewhere in other books of the Bible? And the truth of the matter is the book of Revelation passes those three tests with flying colors. It certainly passes the test of orthodoxy because it fits with the rest of Scripture. It doesn't contradict it. Let me give you some examples of that. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, written back in the 6th century BC, talks about a coming seven-year tribulation period. Talks about when the tribulation period is going to start. There's going to be a treaty of some sort between the Antichrist and unbelieving Israel. What's going to happen at the midpoint? The temple is going to be desecrated. What's going to happen at the end? The second coming of Jesus. And everything John reveals in this book harmonizes with that structure, doesn't contradict it. John just adds more details, telling you what's going to happen during the different halves of the tribulation period. Talks about the seal judgments and the trumpet judgments and the bowl judgments. In other words, he's building on a structure already erected by the prophet Daniel back in chapter 9, verse 27 of the book of Daniel. The book uh, fits very, very well with the Olivet Discourse. Christ in Matthew chapter 24 gives the various birth pangs that will signal the end of the age and the birth of the kingdom into, on planet earth. And John's revelation harmonizes with that. False Christs is spoken of in the first birth pang and the first seal judgment. War is spoken of in the second birth pang and the second seal judgment. The same with famine, death, martyrs, earthquakes evangelism. In other words, John is not contradicting what Jesus said in the Olivet Discourse. His book is in harmony with it. John is not contradicting what Daniel said in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. John's material harmonizes with it. And so when you take a look at all of these different factors, uh, whether it's uh, orthodoxy, apostolicity, Catholicity, uh, you can see very clearly that the book of Revelation written by the Apostle John is deserving of canonical status. And although some did object early on to the canonicity of the book of Revelation, it's important to understand that most of the early church fathers accepted the book's 
canonicity. So all of that being said, we believe that John the Apostle wrote it, and John, as the author of the book, as an apostle who wrote the book, makes the book canonical. It, it deserves a place in the New Testament canon. In fact, I would argue it deserves a very prominent place in the New Testament canon. Music